Imagine a special waterway in Europe that makes doing business easier. It's like a big, bright road that sets new rules for moving things around. We're talking about the Seine Nord Europe Canal, which is a big improvement from the old Canal du Nord. The Canal du Nord was built in the 1960s, but it needed to be made bigger to fit the large ships we use today. Then came a smart idea. Let's build a huge canal connecting the Seine River to the Escot River, so big ships can easily pass through. The Seine Nord Europe project, costing 5.1 billion euros, is mainly about making the movement of goods between France and Northern Europe better. It's not just about sending things to Germany, it's about finding a smarter and greener way for trade all across Europe. The project covers an impressive 107 kilometer and is a big deal. It's planned to be finished by 2030, connecting the Oise River at Compiègne to the Dunkirk Scheldt Canal. But what makes this canal so special? And how will it change the way Europe trades? Join us on Superstructures to find out. For many years, France faced a big problem. Its old canals like the Canal du Nord and the Canal de Saint-Quentin couldn't handle the large cargo ships we use today. This led to more trucks on the roads, causing traffic, pollution, and problems. The solution was a grand idea. Build a canal connecting the Oise River to the Dunkirk Scheldt Canal, creating a new route for bigger ships and reducing road congestion. However, turning this plan into reality wasn't easy. The project needed a lot of money. And after the economic crisis in 2007-2008, Finding funds from public-private partnerships became challenging. Doubts emerged about whether such an expensive project was possible. In 2012, a new government questioned the need for the canal, and there was a real risk of the project being cancelled. But the engineers didn't give up. They went back to the drawing board, found a way to use part of the existing Canal du Nord, saving money and helping the environment. After years of challenges, the project gained momentum in 2015. A new, more cost-effective plan was in place, and in 2016, the French president gave the green light for construction, bringing the canal back to life. Despite facing doubts and financial challenges, the Seine Nord Europe Canal is moving steadily towards its 2030 completion, supported strongly by the European Union, the French government, and local authorities. This canal is set to revolutionize European inland water transport, bringing increased efficiency and environmental awareness. But what sets the Seine Nord Europe Canal apart? How does its construction address the monumental task of reshaping the landscape both physically and economically? Join us as we explore the engineering and environmental marvel that is the Seine Nord Europe Canal. The Seine Nord Europe Canal goes beyond merely connecting two points. It's a visionary project reshaping European trade and emphasizing eco-friendly transportation. This link is crucial for enhancing the efficient movement of goods between Paris and major ports like Dunkirk, Antwerp, and Rotterdam. Among its notable features are the sophisticated locks and aqueducts, not just functional, but also architectural marvels. The locks, strategically designed to manage elevation changes, showcase hydraulic engineering excellence. The canal boasts six locks, acting as water elevators, allowing vessels to navigate varying water levels. These locks, including Montmartre, Noyon, Catigny, Alain, Marquion Bourlon, and Oisy Le Verguet, exhibit drop heights from 641 million to 25.71 million. Their design incorporates innovative water conservation methods, utilizing basins to save and recycle water during operations, demonstrating the canal's commitment to environmental sustainability. Each lock chamber, approximately 200 meters long and 12.5 meters wide, allows navigation in about 30 minutes, ensuring vital efficiency for smooth traffic flow along the canal. The construction of these locks especially those exceeding 25 meters in height, distinguishes them as the largest of their kind in Europe, underscoring the grand scale and ambition of the project. The giant lock, resembling a 10-story building in height, 
efficiently manages substantial water volumes. Another noteworthy aspect of the canal's design is its seamless integration into local territories, minimizing disruption to daily life. This integration involves 62 road and rail restorations, including bridges and underpasses, ensuring smooth and regular crossings across the canal's 107-kilometer stretch. These crossings employ various techniques, with bridges being either beam or arch type, depending on the span distance. The average span is around 80 meters, with some structures exceeding 100 meters. Some crossings are constructed before canal digging to minimize disruptions, and traffic on existing structures is maintained until the new bridges become operational. This meticulous planning and execution guarantee a harmonious blend of the canal into the local landscape. The aqueducts, encompassing a remarkable 1.3-kilometer stretch over La Somme, are meticulously designed to integrate the canal seamlessly into the existing landscape, ensuring uninterrupted water-based and road traffic passage. Elevated about 30 meters above the protected wetlands of the Somme Valley, the bridge is engineered to preserve the natural environment, including the river's flow during flood periods. The construction of this bridge, scheduled to commence in 2025, is a four-year undertaking accompanied by extensive environmental development in the valley, including afforestation efforts. With pedestrian pathways on each side, the bridge serves not only as a conduit for water transport, but also as an integral part of local life, offering scenic routes for walking and cycling. The canal's design prioritizes environmental impact considerations, with efforts to minimize ecological disruption being of paramount importance. The redirection of the Oise River over a four-kilometer stretch stands as a testament to the project's commitment to environmental sensitivity. Moreover, the canal's water needs are sustainably sourced, primarily from the Oise River, supplemented by a substantial loot water reserve in Alains. This 14 million cubic meter reservoir plays a critical role in ensuring year-round navigation on the canal. Engineered with a focus on landscape integration and environmental considerations, the reservoir adheres to stringent safety regulations typical of large dam constructions. The Seine Nord Europe Canal's 5.1 billion euro budget is financed by the EU, the French government, local regions, and departments, with an additional loan of $800 million. This funding underscores the canal's significant impact on enhancing trade and connectivity across Europe. The construction of the Seine Nord Europe Canal has encountered substantial challenges. Integrating this expansive project into a historically and ecologically sensitive landscape, especially areas affected by World War I, demands meticulous archaeological work and a deep respect for historical sites. Environmental concerns are paramount with the project aiming to reduce CO2 emissions by shifting freight transport from roads to waterways. Strategies such as creating new wetlands and conserving groundwater have been implemented to minimize ecological impact. Additionally, the canal's intricate design, involving the construction of large locks, bridges, and a navigable bridge over the Somme Valley, requires sustainable and durable engineering solutions. What do you think about its power to transform business and handle its tough problems? Tell us in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Super Structures. Turn on notifications for more interesting updates. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.